Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Tugavinger here and this is my updated PlayStation 2 Ace Combat Emulation Guide. It's been almost two years since my original guide. Since then, there have been some developments in PlayStation 2 Emulation, and there's also a few errors that I made in my original guide that I'd like to correct. First of all though, I must thank the real heroes here, the developers behind the PCSX2 emulator, to Asasega in the official forums for their work in one of the greatest developments in emulation of Ace Combat and many other games that I'll talk about ahead, and to Filipino White Boy on YouTube who keeps up with the developments very closely and helped me catch up to them. I am but a tester and a humble messenger to all of you. But onwards. All the information ahead is up to date to build 2837 of the version 1.5 of PCSX2. This version has not yet been officially released. However, developmental builds are available at this website linked in the description. Simply download the most recent one. After that, you should run PCSX2 and run the first time setup wizard. It'll set the basics perfectly fine. You probably will never have to touch any of those settings again. Although, of note, at this stage you will also need your PS2 BIOS. Before we get to configuring everything else, you'll want to download the other two files in the description of this video. They contain two individual sets of game fixes for all three games, implemented through cheat codes. And my friends, this is big. This is the holy grail. And I'll need to get a little technical to properly explain it. Most PS2 games implement interlacing. Very simply, this is a technique by which only half the lines on a frame are actually drawn, say the even or odd ones. This is called a field. So on a PS2, effectively, these games are 60 fields per second. This allowed the PS2 to save a lot of resources, and on the CRT display, because of image persistence, it looked basically identical. And PCSX2 correctly emulates this behavior. But on a computer and on an LCD, it's both unnecessary and looks terrible. That is why PCSX2 has de-interlacing modes that attempt to combine those two fields back into a full frame. However, none of them are appropriate for Ace Combat. This is where the aforementioned Asasega comes in. This PCSX2 forum user has managed to disable interlacing on a number of games, so they never even go through that process to begin with. And for the benefit of us mongrels who don't have a single clue about assembly, uh, managed to implement this th through the use of cheat codes. Simply place the files in the first download in the cheats folder inside your PCSX2 folder and enable cheats on the PCSX2 system menu. I thought this would be a minor improvement, but boy, was I wrong. As it turns out, a very large number of the graphical issues that still haunted the Ace Combat games were in fact side effects of the whole interlacing de interlacing process. The results are amazing. The games both look much, much smoother, especially in fast movement sequences, and the game runs faster because the emulator doesn't have to do that process to begin with. It even fixes something that I wouldn't have thought for a thousand years would have been associated with interlacing. Drumroll, please! The Ace Combat 4 player textures are fixed! Well, sort of. The hangar textures are absolutely perfect. However, in-game... Yeah. It's very strange. The, s the textures now show up, but with a black outline around them, giving them almost this cell-shaded effect. I thought it might be a shadow-related issue, and the alpha setting did change it, but to a white border, which frankly looks worse. Night maps are an exception. Lifeline, Bunker Shot, Emancipation. These three have uh, some <laughs> very odd effects that have been actually changing as simulation development goes on. Right now they have this ghosting around the aircraft that I could not get rid of through any means, but I find enabling alpha on these maps actually yields an improvement, so I recommend you do that. 
Also, side note here, don't forget in shader options you can increase the brightness if you want to be able to actually see a damn thing on these maps. Or you can just max out the contrast as well and go for full-on thumbnail mode. Up to you. I have to note one drawback from these no interlacing codes. The FMVs in Ace Combat 5 are reduced to only 24 frames per second. If you are playing through the game for the first time, I recommend you do not enable this code. But of course, this won't be an issue for repeat players who just skip the cutscenes anyway. The second download is a set of widescreen hacks for 5 and 0. Now, PCSX2 already comes with widescreen hacks by default. In fact, if you have both them, and 16x9 mode inside the game on, you'll notice you actually have a wider field of view than on the console itself, which is quite interesting. However, in cockpit mode, that increased field of view can lead to some uh, glitching around the canopy frame, or nonsense like this. What the codes in the description do is disable the widescreen hack for cockpit mode alone, so you can have the best of both worlds, the increased field of view in third person and correct rendering in cockpit view. This isn't too relevant, but it is an improvement nonetheless. With all of that said, we can finally move on and fine-tune the emulator. Under Emulation Settings, the first three fields should have been properly set up during the first time wizard, there is no need to even touch them. GS window settings will mostly be personal preference, just make sure you have a 16x9 aspect ratio on your window. As for VSync, I have it on, as I don't notice any increased input delay, and I don't suffer from any performance drop from it. It should also be noted that currently, ECSX2 does not have a discrete full screen mode. Going to full screen only puts it in borderless windowed, which is nice, you can tab out perfectly well, but it is more resource intensive. There is talk of implementing a proper full screen mode. If that does come to pass, you can expect significant performance improvement for those of you with lower end machines, perhaps in the 15 to 20 frames per second range. The speed hacks tab should be enabled by default, and all of these are mostly safe, free performance boosts. However, if you do have a, a pointed machine that can handle 60 frames per second without these hacks turned on, I have heard reports that turning them off may reduce micro stutter. Micro stutter is when you notice choppy animations even when you are at 60 frames per second. It is a very complex issue that's often difficult to diagnose and changes from machine to machine, so I would advise to test this for yourself. And don't touch the Game Fixes tab, these are all manual selections, all the automatic ones should be turned on by default in the System menu. Anyway, on to the most important bit, the video plugin settings. After my personal testing, and the advice I received from others, these are my favorite settings. Together with the no interlacing codes, these settings will be the best for the vast majority of you, allowing you to experience all three games at their very finest currently possible. However, depending on your personal case, there might be some settings you might want to change, I'll go into those, and some technical details about each one of these select attacks after the break. Welcome back! So, on these settings. The first point I must touch is the Align and Merge Sprite hardware hacks. These were absolutely critical prior to the no interlacing codes. A line sprite originally got rid of the black lines that haunted the games for many years, and merge sprite, aside from doing that by itself, also reduced blurring significantly in conjunction with the half pixel offset. By removing so many issues at their source, the no interlacing codes allowed me to remove many of the hardware hacks that were required to properly emulate the games. These two, however, were so universally important that I could not possibly test them in every single scenario. I'm nearly certain that a line sprite is no longer necessary, however merge sprite very much still is for the Ace Combat 5 menus and the Ace Combat 4 night missions, where it does cause the blurring we saw earlier, but it does remove some very nasty black lines. 
But if you're not running Theno interlacing codes, for example, for an Ace Combat 5 playthrough with cutscenes on, as I discussed above, you will definitely need both of these options on. And if you're doing that, you'll also want to have your interlacing mode in Bob TFF for gameplay and in Blend or Auto or None for the cutscenes. You can simply change by pressing F5 multiple times while in game. Alternatively, you can simply leave it in blend mode for the entirety of the game, however, you will have some noticeable blurring in gameplay. Now, taking it from the top, the recommended render is the Direct3D11 one. It used to lag behind OpenGL in terms of new features, but they've caught up massively in recent months. They're basically equivalent now. If you have a high-end NVIDIA card, you may want to try OpenGL. For everyone else, it offers no benefits. If you do use it, keep all the extra options on their defaults. Interlacing is obviously set to none. Texture filtering is preferred for excluding Sprite, as Fully Force will filter some textures that really aren't meant to be. 8-bit textures, as the tooltip says, is basically a trade-off between CPU and GPU. If you have a stronger CPU than GPU, then enable it, otherwise leave it as is. And the large frame buffer option doesn't seem to have any effect on Ace Combat. The internal resolution option is essentially your performance slider. I recommend 4x native, as 3x is actually slightly below 1080p. Of course, if you have a 2K or 4K monitor, use the appropriate options for that. If you cannot obtain 60 frames per second on any resolution option, simply lower it. It is your biggest performance scaler. And remember, even if you're running it at 2 times native, you're still running all these games at twice the original resolution. So there's always a benefit to be gained. But there is no benefit greater than being able to run them at perfect 60 frames per second. If you cannot, lower this option. Custom resolutions are not recommended, as they will bring back the black lines across the screen, along with some other issues. Simply use one of the multipliers. An isotropic filtering simply looks better, and unlike what the tooltip says, it's basically free in performance, so just take it. Map mapping is what eliminates the horrible glitchy ground textures issue that plagued Ace Combat for many, many years. Basic serves just fine. I tested full in an, uh, in an effort to eliminate the texture pop-up that you see in some particular scenes, namely very obviously on the introduction to Glacial Skies, but it makes no difference there. CRC hack should be left at its default level for the render. Half pixel offset, you won't want it at special texture aggressive. This was one of the greatest developments in, in the emulator, as this particular more aggressive option allows the game to eliminate some heavy ghosting that was present in very particular missions. Sprite should be set to full for the same purpose, and half sprite should be set to half, which will eliminate some horizontal lines that appear over the minimap and the pause menu. And nothing else really needs touching, aside again from alpha if you're playing an Ace Combat 4 night mission. But there is one more option that I'd like to talk about that isn't here anymore. In previous versions of the emulator, there was another hardware hack called Unscale Point and Line. It allowed pixel thin elements like UI or menu borders to scale appropriately with the increased resolution instead of staying as a single pixel. However, this option is now enabled by default, you can turn it off. And that's nice, it looks great in general. However, it has one particular side effect that's more humorous than relevant, which is it makes nav lights on aircraft much, much brighter. You go into the intro of Mayhem now, it's a light show. You try to land on a carrier, look at that! Anyway, I believe that is it. You are now able to run Ace Combat 4, 5 and 0 better than ever before. Even, I dare say, than on the PS2 itself. But do mind, the emulation is not perfect yet. We are so close to it, but there are still issues. Namely, in Ace Combat 4, the border around the aircraft, the night mission ghosting. One other particular issue is the burst missiles in Ace Combat 5 and Zero, which have very, very strange artifacts that I could not eliminate through any option. But really, at the end of the day, 
even for the most perfectionist of fans, these are just small nitpicks. The games look and play great, and we could hardly ask for more. However, be assured, if and when there is any emulator development relevant to Ace Combat, I will be here to tell you. I have the utmost respect for everyone who works in emulation on any platform. You are preserving history, you are preserving our beloved games. Thankfully for us, Ace Combat is no exception. Thanks to emulation, like many others, these three games will live forever. And not just in our hearts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video will be helpful to you. And to all of you, fair winds.